we would not be alive if it wasn't for plants. This video will cover their structure and function. Photosynthesis is going to take water, carbon dioxide, and turn it into oxygen and glucose. We can take light and we can put it above the equation, but do not put it in the equation because it is not a reactant. It's just a condition that's needed. You also need to know the symbols for these. So water is H2O plus carbon dioxide, which is CO2. Goes to oxygen, O2 plus glucose, which is C6H12O6. This needs to be balanced, but it's a nice easy one to balance because it is 666. So you can just remember that it's 666. And when you're writing out your formula, make sure your numbers are little and are in the correct place. Because if you write this, that's wrong, that's wrong, and you will lose the marks. In photosynthesis, we are taking energy from here, we're taking energy from light, and we are locking it up in glucose. This is an endo thermic reaction. It takes in energy. There are certain requirements for both synthesis. First of all, we are going to need chlorophyll. That is our green pigment in leaves. We're going to need water and carbon dioxide because they are our reactants and then we're going to need sunlight. And the levels of these can greatly affect how much photosynthesis takes place. The rate of photosynthesis is going to depend on the percentage level of carbon dioxide. As the percentage level of carbon dioxide increases, so the rate of photosynthesis is going to increase, but only up to a point. After this point, there are going to be other limiting factors. Past this point, we need to increase something like the water, light, or the temperature if we want more photosynthesis to take place. We could easily switch this out to be percentage level of water, and the graph would look the same. When plants are very, very cold, everything acts very, very slowly. Not a lot happens. It slowly increases until a nice point where the enzymes are happy and there's lots and lots of photosynthesis going on until it gets too hot and they start to be denatured and then the rate will fall off very rapidly. So we have our rate of reaction increasing the temperature and our optimal temperature and our enzymes getting denatured. It's really important that you remember that the enzymes are denatured, they are not killed, they are denatured. Light intensity is important for the rate of photosynthesis. When it is nighttime, when it is dark, we do not have a lot of photosynthesis going on. As we get further through the day, as we get more light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis will increase until we get to a point where it is no longer the limiting factor and other things like the reactants or temperature need to be increased. After this point, we need to think about increasing other things. Now, even though the graph is flat here, it looks like it might have stopped. It hasn't. There is still a steady rate of photosynthesis. It's just not increasing as much as it was down here. It's just a steady rate. The actual um, rate of photosynthesis that takes place is much more complicated than depending on just one thing. It's going to depend on lots of different things all at once. The glucose from photosynthesis is going to be stored as starch. The most obvious example of starch is going to be potatoes. Here we have a cross section of a typical leaf. Our palisade mesophyll, where photosynthesis is going to take place. Cuticle, which is the waxy layer. 
upper and lower epidermis, which cover the plant. Spongy mesophyll, which is a space for gas exchange. And the guard cell and stomata, which is where transpiration takes place. Inside the plant, we have the xylem and the phloem. The phloem is going to carry water. This is generally going to be an upwards direction from the roots where it is collected to the leaves where it can be used for photosynthesis and the phloem which carries ions and food and this is generally in a downwards direction from the leaf where food can be made in photosynthesis to the roots where it can be stored in for example potatoes. There are several factors that affect the rate of transpiration and transpiration not only involves water uh, moving out of the stomata, but also moving up through the xylem. So if we have bright light, that is going to lead to more transpiration. More light means more photosynthesis, which means there's going to need to be more water brought up into the cell. If we have a high temperature, that is going to lead to more transpiration. Because the rate of reaction is going to happen faster. If we have high wind... That is going to lead to more transpiration. Because wind is going to be um, brushing against the leaf or flowing against the leaf, moving things out of the way, so diffusion is going to play a part here. And if we have high humidity, this is going to lead to lower transpiration. Water is going to struggle to leave the leaf because there is a very high concentration of water. It's very humid outside. Phototrophism means something is going to grow towards the light. Geotrophism or gravitrophism means something is going to grow towards gravity. Meaning your roots are always going to go downwards and your shoots are always going to go upwards. Gibberellins are important for growth. Um, ethene is important for ripening plants and auxins are important for growth and they're going to do growth in the right direction.